Hi everyone, here's the Bookchemist once again. If you can see it behind me, please ignore the sea of cardboard. I'm in the process of moving house. Today I'll be reviewing The Flamethrowers by Rachel Kushner, a novel that was on my radar when it came out. I remember reading lots of praise about it, uh, lots of people seemed to be really enthusiastic about this novel, but then somehow it slipped my mind and I only really read it uh, very recently uh, for a couple of reasons. The most uh, the most important of them being that I found it for a pound at a charity shop, but also because I discovered that The Flamethrowers is actually set partly in my native neck of the woods. Parts of the novel are set in Milan and even more in the industrial outskirt of the city, and my own hometown of Monza is actually mentioned several times in the book because of its famous race course. The novel's protagonist, whom we get to know simply as Reno, the name of her hometown in Nevada, uh, races motorcycles, she, is, she has a passion for motorcycles, uh, and at one point in the book, she, without spoiling much, she has the opportunity, or at least the opportunity comes up, of going to race uh, in the truck in Monza. Uh, the, there's lots in the book, especially in its early part, about what it means to be on a motorcycle, to speed down the highways of the American West, to become something together with your vehicle that's something more than just the sum of your parts, the rider and the vehicle itself. And I don't care about motorcycles, I don't, it's not something that interests me, but I do love fiction that manages to transmit a certain passion for something. Uh, it manages to, to, to make you understand why some people love something like motorcycles that you maybe don't really care about in your own everyday life. And Flamethrowers is definitely that type of fiction. Uh, Reno uh, has a passion for, for racing, but she's also an art student. She actually uh, recently graduated from art school at the beginning of the novel. She's in her early 20s and she moves to New York City and gets to experience the art scene in New York. And much of the charm and much of the, the fascination, I would say, in the flamethrowers comes from the fact that it pitches against one another and it, it combines in strange ways worlds that would, at first sight, they would appear to be very different from one another, if not in contradiction. The world of the American West, with its deserts and its motels and its races, and the uh, world of New York City, and especially New York City's art scene and glamorous artsy intelligentsia. But also the world of the opulent and decadent rich classes in 1970s Italy, and the world of um, the counterculture at the time, these massive protest movements calling for widespread revolution. This is not quite a coming-of-age novel, but a constant motif throughout the book is how the protagonist gets to experience life, gets to maybe abandon some of the beliefs, maybe naive beliefs that she was still carrying with her from her adolescence. Uh, the novel, in general, the narrative has a very keen eye when it comes to exposing the selfishness and the pettiness and the self-aggrandizing tendencies in the many people that she meets, both in New York City, in Italy later on, uh, across the, the entire narrative. In fact, I think one of the things that stand out the most from the flamethrowers is that it, it provides several portraits of fairly horrible men who are not villains, they're not extremely evil, although there are some evil people in here, they are just full of themselves and fairly abusive in, in rather subtle ways. I'm thinking here especially of Sandro Valera and Ronnie Fontaine, but many other characters, especially from the New York sections of the book, felt fairly unpleasant to me, but in a very interesting way, in a way that truly explored the reasons why they behave the way they do, the role they play in this strange social ecosystem that is the, the art world of New York City. Not only the novel moves between several different settings, you also experience a lot happening in this book. Uh, you get to experience high-speed races and terrorism scares, grand openings, and muggings and blackouts. Uh, several chapters in the book are even set in the, in the early and then mid-20th century, 
and followed the life of an Ardito, basically a, a stormtrooper uh, from the Italian army in World War I, who later became an industrialist uh, with Mus under Mussolini's government, later opposing Mussolini and gaining immense power in the um, Italy of, uh, that followed World War II of the, in the second half of the, of the 20th century. This exuberance with mixing different time periods, different settings, different tones and episodes, and even this, um, this interest in looking in the past for the, the roots of modern problems reminded me a lot of White Teeth by Zadie Smith. I think the novels, especially in this uh, quite effervescent uh, atmosphere, share a lot in common. I tend to appreciate this type of variety a lot in fiction, especially in long ambitious novels such as The Flamethrowers, but a consequence of it inevitably is that not all parts of the novel, not all portions of it work as well as the others. Some of them are really engaging, while some of them came across to me at least as slightly boring and uh, maybe a little longer than they needed to be, and by all means it's not the uh, some of the more apparently boring passages actually come across as the more convincing and interesting. One of the best passages in the novel, for instance, uh, comes in the second half of the book, where Reno is spending a few weeks in a villa on Lake Como, and she has to cope with the haughty, snooty family that owns the place and that keeps looking down on her and making fun of her behind their back. Not much necessarily happens, but the the sheer tension in the place makes for brilliant fiction and allows the novel to explore something very interesting about Reno's own image of herself, the behavior of these other people, and the way these people behave to one, toward one another in such a, uh, such a unique setting. It's not just that some sections work a little better than others, it's also that I didn't necessarily get the full impression that all of these various components of the book work together well to form a cohesive whole. The passages that are set in the past and that follow Old Man Valera that Ardito I mentioned before are some of the most interesting in the book, but I am still not 100% sure how they are supposed to, what light they are supposed to cast on the rest of the book. And by all means, they don't necessarily have to all join together to form a beautiful picture. Uh, it might even just be that the whole point of it is to allow you to contemplate these different lives, these different uh, minds and these different characters within the same narrative, juxtaposing these different ways of living and allowing you to draw your own conclusions. Uh, this is what I'm criticizing here, the, uh, this slight, link, uh, slight incoherence that I perceive is by no means a bad thing in itself. If anything, White Thief, uh, which instead is a novel that ties together its various subplots in a very, very neat way at the end, uh, could be criticized by someone else as feeling almost cartoonish in the way it brings together all these various plots. I did, however, finish the book with the sense that The Flamethrowers is a novel full of great ideas and memorable characters, but one that I wish had coagulated into maybe a slightly more cohesive narrative unity. I've talked a lot about the chapters set in Italy, and I must say that I have no idea what type of research uh, Kushner did before writing the book, but she captures brilliantly, as somebody who is from that part of the world, she does capture brilliantly both the setting of these chapters, both the opulence of the these posh lakeside towns close to the Alps and the humdrum gloominess of Milan's industrial outskirts, and especially she captures very well the mentality of the people living in these places. There's a certain uncouth haughtiness that you find in posh people from a certain, back, a certain background in Lombardy, people who can be extremely rude while convinced that they are actually quite refined and, and superior, and Kushner Kushner captures that very well in the book. Kushner's take on the years of lead, this season of political violence and upheaval in the Italian 1970s, which plays quite an important part in the book, uh, her take is uh, fairly moderate. Uh, I believe that the narrative shows a certain sympathy for the protesting uh, students and the, the, the people protesting a system and a society that they see as unjust 
paternalistic, oppressive, archaic. Uh, she shows the, the narrative shows sympathy for these people without engaging with the deeper, uh, complex political, historical, social issues at the heart of the protests. And I think that's perfectly fine. Reno's outlook on these protests is an outsider's, an American's, and the novel's take on them cannot be but an outsider's take rather than an uh, informed insider's attitude toward or, or a uh, some kind of sweeping judgment about this complex period of history. Overall, I was definitely impressed with the flamethrowers. Uh, when I read it, I actually hadn't read American fiction, or at least contemporary American fiction, in a couple of months, and it definitely reminded me of why I love it so much. Uh, I, it's hard for me to compare it to the only other Kushner novel I've read, which is The Mars Room. The Mars Room is much less ambitious, but is it's, it's also much more focused and elegant, I would say. Uh, but Flamethrowers is a, a good novel and I would definitely recommend it to anybody who appreciates an ambitious and sweeping narrative. Thank you so much everybody for watching the review, thank you to my patrons for supporting the YouTube channel, and goodbye everybody.